In continuation of our program, experts from the IRI, Artificial Intelligence Institute. The Research Institute has more than 100 research staff working on its projects. Uh, together they look for new uses of AI to tackle societally significant and scientifically significant tasks. We will have uh, the senior development director, uh, the senior executive director and CDO of Sberbank, Maxim Yuromenko, and the CEO of uh, the research. Hello everyone. Today, AI and machine learning technology are part of our lives and are used as a foundation for creating high-tech products and services. And clearly this trend is here to stay and likely grow in the next years. The attempt to guess the most promising areas leads many companies, many tech companies to invest in powerful, strong R&D teams. So we've decided to do the same and to create our R&D team. Uh, Leonid will tell you more about our project, the projects that we've announced. And before we talk about the Research Institute, I just wanted to quickly remind the first steps of SPARE and specifically I wanted to tell you the point we were at several years ago, eight or nine years ago, we decided to do this experiment. We decided to substitute classical scoring models with the so-called machine learning models and the results exceeded all our expectations. So we observed a, a very strong financial effect and that was the first experiment of this kind in banking. There were not that many teams at the time specializing in data analysis and big data work. And in addition to that, we also needed some time and more resources to ensure this uh, migration from the then relevant uh, uh, proprietary software to our own platform solution, and uh, then we deployed it to production. We made the first hundreds of million, millions of dollars with the credit scoring. That money was made thanks to the new scoring models and the ML models. And then we started scaling up our data scientist uh, function. We introduced centralized governance, and by 2016, basically, we already had our teams in the key areas asset and liability management, macroeconomic analysis. Those were the first models that helped us analyze customer experience and provide the best commercial proposals for classic uh, banking products. And then we decided to do another experiment. We decided to have our own dedicated um, AI and ML team. The AI lab and started doing product research and uh, research of machine learning and a bit later deep learning applications for uh, specific tasks. About a year later we launched a wide-scale AI transformation program to introduce the AI component in all our critical banking processes. At that point we had our first ecosystem products and so a year later the program started paying its dividends financially speaking as well and it enabled us to create products and services that wouldn't be imaginable without ML. We had several teams in risks, risk management and finance and some other emerging competences in business and over the last six to seven years we made a leap forward and now the headcount of the team that works on AI solutions exceeds 4,000 people. 
And now why we're here. About a year ago, we initiated the establishment of a separate unit, the R&D unit, to work on disruptive uh, developments, disruptive innovation. The experience of other big companies shows that sponsors do not really find it that obvious. The R&D applications for their products and services, and so it took us several months to launch the project that Leonid will be talking about, the Artificial Intelligence Research Institute. Here on this map you can see the spur teams that are already doing AI and ML research. This institute that we will be talking about grew within a year from one person, its CEO, to a 100-strong team. Leonid, over to you. Thank you, Le thank you, Leonid. Uh, uh, thank you, Maxim. Thank you for this introduction. We are celebrating our first birthday, and uh, it's true that we do have uh, 100 team members, 37 candidates and doctors of science. We also have 15 professors. We have students and uh, postgraduates as well in our team. We have 18 sub teams working on different research and development areas, and I will quickly describe what we do. The institute is managed by an uh, international scientific advisory board. We have uh, recognized experts on AI, data analysis and neuroscience on this board. The head of the board is uh, Jürgen Schmidt-Huber. We created the institute in order to do state-of-the-art research on AI and also to advance research and scientific progress and to bring AI technology in in our lives. The world is facing so many challenges. It's increased load on the healthcare systems, the climate change that we can observe and feel every day, the aging population and the growing energy demand. We believe that AI will be playing absolutely critical and essential role in finding solutions to all these problems. AI technologies are all around us. We use algorithms today as tools in our hands to solve our everyday and also scientific and research programs. These algorithms help us become smarter, faster, stronger. But of course, we dream that we will one day create algorithms that are just as capable as humans. At the Institute, we have two main streams. We have basic research, fundamental research. This is where we work to create new, more universal, stronger algorithms. And the other stream is applied research. This is where we work on applied tools and use of AI for practical purposes, for practical tasks. Speaking of the projects that we've launched at the Institute, within the last year, with the fundamental research, we launched a project on looking for new neural architectures, a project on uh, reinforcement learning and world modeling algorithms, symbolic approaches and automated theory improving. We also know that in order to assess the progress uh, towards AGI, we need uh, specific benchmarks. So we are working on such NLP and multi-model benchmarks, and of course, we work on uh, the development of large-scale multi-model, multi-task models. One of such uh, models uh, is the core for Fusion Brain Platform with spare, device, uh, with spare, and spare devices. This is a training system which uh, combines various Russified there is Russian language uh, models, RuGPT-3, RuDAL. The system use, uses all kinds of modalities, images, texts, audio files, and it can solve all kinds of problems. For example, visual question answering or code to go translation. This slide illustrates a couple of examples, a couple of images. Uh, generated by Rue Daly, 
We've created the XL and the XXL models, uh, 1.3 billion and 12 billion parameters respectively. We will get back to that later today during a special presentation in the scientific track. As for the second stream of ours, the applied research, we have three key areas that we will be developing. AI for health, AI for science, and AI for engineering or for industries. Our medical cluster includes several teams. Medical imaging analysis, this is probably one of the most popular, one of the most frequently used AI technology for healthcare. Usually, the goal is to be able to identify a pathology or, ab or an abnormality on a you know, medical image. If the images are standardized, this uh, job can be very easily done with the modern convolutional neural networks. But in real life, it's a bit more complicated than that. As a rule, all these images come from various sources, from different scanners, MRI and uh, CI scanners uh, are very different. There are no two scanners that produce the same images. So algorithms, if, if you train them with images that come only from one scanning device, they will be making mistakes with images coming from another source. And this is unacceptable for practitioners. So one of the things that we're trying to do at our institute is to create some kind of universal pipeline to process, to standardize these images, to help algorithms be accurate and reliable in identifying pathologies. On the right-hand side, you see an example of what we do with the, the new vaccine development. This is the S protein, the spike protein, and the elements that help the virus merge with this host cell. Our algorithm is designed to help us understand how the structure, the formula, and its immunizing powers can be modified, can be changed. Another area that we are focusing on is AI for science. We believe that the way research is done now is going to change very radically in the years to come. Historically, natural scientists, uh, sciences started with uh, a theory. Uh, with observation, then theory, then calculations, uh, formulas, uh, Schrodinger equation or Maxwell equation used to identify the exact properties of, of a model or an object. Uh, precision is probably the bad word because we use a lot of appro approximation and so all these calculations take a lot of time. They're very resource consuming. A few years ago, artificial intelligence tried to help scientists in this regard and create models which use as input, for example, a model and uh, predict its properties as the output. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work like that uh, because no matter how big your neural network is, it doesn't really know about uh, Maxwell or Schrodinger equations or the laws of nature. And while they operate, they can break them pretty easily. And no scientist will believe the output of uh, these models. And uh, sometimes they turn non-physical. So one of our teams is working to create a pipeline which will unite the, the fundamental laws of nature, the fundamental laws of physics, and ML methods in order to produce algorithms which are understandable and legible to people, to researchers and uh, output that does not violate the laws of nature. And then using structures and uh, attributes, we will be able to predict the ultimate properties of, of something. For example, we can predict the solubility of, of a molecule based on uh, some of its properties or its toxicity. Of course, as a, as a scientist, uh, there is a temptation to go backwards, meaning use 
a desired property to find the the the, substan the substance that would provide such properties this uh, this is why we have another team of ours which is working on algorithms to generate specific materials and substances that have desired properties they're currently focusing on the so-called green, tr green transition for example oxygen generation catalysts or uh, the increase of um, solar battery capacity. And another example I wanted to provide is uh, what we do with AI for industry. Digital avatar, digital twin is something that we use all the time. Digital transition in industry is not just about digital models of uh, actual hardware, but all the accompanying information that is um, collected in real time and shown to the operators. It's more than just visual representation, but it is also about the possibility to predict how the process will behave. The attempt to, to, to predict uh, flaws or defects that might appear with the process. And to do that, we can use AI, LSTM, transformers, or other models. This is what our institute does. In particular, we have a team that works with AI for industry. In general, as you have heard, human participation is crucial in all of the process, so it's very important for us to create the algorithm that humans can understand. We want to trust the models. We want to have unbiased mechanisms. Everything that I've talked about is covered by an umbrella term, ethical AI, and by working with a lot of data, uh, we have created an ethical committee that validates and approves the research that we do. We have more than 100 uh, experts at the same time. We cannot make a global dent in the world, and we have built a lot of partnerships with the leading research institutes uh, in Russia, and we continue to grow our partnership network, Maxim. Thank you, Leonid. Obviously, the Institute is not living in the vacuum, so we will be happy to work with uh, all the professionals and uh, researchers. We would love to work with the teams that uh, think about how ML can improve user experience and improve business indicators. And obviously, we are ready to cooperate with the research and scientific institutes. It will be great to see you all as part of our university institute, working with our institute and working on the projects that uh, Leonid talked about. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maxim. Thank you, Leonid. Thank you very much for your report. It is really great that uh, so many experts work in research and developments uh, in terms of the AI. We wish you all the luck and all the success.